prayer, in case you never figure this out, makes you go closer to God, does not make God closer to you. God is already closer to you. It makes you aware of God. That's all it does. It elevates you to God. People constantly say, but Sylvia, I prayed so hard, I prayed so long, I prayed so hard, I prayed so long. And God's not listening. Again, I repeat, it's because that wasn't in your chart. And I've always said to people, and listen to me very careful, be awfully careful what you do pray for, you just may get it. So be careful. It's like Reba said, what we've all been taught, what Francine has taught us, what we know from God, is be specific. Now, the biggest one, and last but not least, and we'll get back to the wealth again, but happiness. There is the big one. It's the big one and the little one. What does it take you to be happy? First of all, let me premise this by saying, preface this by saying, you will not get peace of mind in this life. Oh, she said that. No, no, no. You're not supposed to have peace of mind in this life. That's not where it is. That would be like saying you're going to school and you won't study. And you'll be happy. No, you won't pass. The only way you're going to get peace of mind is if you become a total idiot and you don't care. And then you walk around tearing a napkin saying, I have peace of mind. Maybe. <laughs> oh, but if I could have inner peace. Forget this inner peace, higher self, all this stuff. When the, when the whole mystical thing hit, psychic mystical thing hit, everybody said, oh, I don't meditate. I don't have peace of mind. I'm not centered. What? You spend your whole life keeping somewhere on the center. You can line everything up, but you're not supposed to be totally centered. If you're totally centered and in peace, you're on the other side. And you're totally happy. Why can't I be happy? It was never the guarantee. Nobody stamped on your bottom as you came through your mother's vagina. This soul will have nothing but happiness and justice and fairness and equality. It's not the truth. But if I get more religious, if I get more spiritual, won't I get peace of mind? No, you won't. You will get an understanding and you will get tremendous knowledge and with that brings a comfort and a belief. And that belief salves the scars and it rubs over them. And it makes you strong and it makes you purposeful. And then you stand and say, give me the next challenge. And it comes. It would, it would come anyway, even if you didn't say anything. And you have a right to say, I want a breather now. Be careful when you say you want a breather, because you could throw yourself right into a desert, desert period. I'm tired of all this. Then you get nothing. And I'm seeing more people with nothing than everything. It's like nothing's going on in my personal life, nothing's going on in my social life, nothing's going on in my work life, and nothing's going on, nothing, 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 nothing. Because somewhere we said, gee, I wish I could just have nothing for a while. Somebody heard, said give them nothing. Be careful the spoken word is powerful. I don't want to make you paranoid. Because then you get to the other side of things where I was with this group one time and I started to get up, and I'd been sitting cross-legged on the floor. I said, oh, God, I'm getting arthritic. The guy said, oh, now you've caused it. There you said it. I said, oh, shut up. <laughs> so you don't have to be. It's with intent. And what makes us happy? Universally, there's something that makes us happy. It's very simple, free of worry, number one. All of us would agree with that. Now it begins to be, and really what makes us happy is having a spiritual insight. Those two are universal. I don't care whether you're a fundamentalist, Mormon, Catholic, Lutheran, whatever. If you found in your heart what makes you peaceful, not totally at peace, but peaceful in your belief, righteous in your belief, there is a certain degree of happiness. 
if you can in your job find your niche and you say I will keep my head when all about me is losing theirs you will find a degree a measure of happiness and leave all of that nattering out of what people say what you think they expect of you because I always quote Cyrano de Bergerac the play when he stood and he said all I have is my white plume before God that's all you take is your unsullied your intentions your moral issues that's what you take your loves your caring the sum total of you that's all you take have you lied sure is that a sin depending where your motive came from I remember years ago when my mother-in-law was dying I said she said please Sylvia how long do I have I knew Lillian I said Lillian you have seven years this was the only ever lie I told to a human being in all the years in a reading situation she had seven weeks I knew she couldn't handle it she was happy to the day she died planning how she was gonna wear her wigs and everything I couldn't do that to her is Lillian mad at me Francine said no Lillian was glad you did that because she wouldn't have been able to handle seven weeks it's what we can deal with and give yourself time limits she was very smart she said I want it by December December would make her happy maybe even October would be better she wants a million dollars she's gonna put it into the atmosphere could she be happy with less yes but would a million be better do I need to be healthy you bet I'm going to program today for healthy because as the mind goes so does the body go but you say but Sylvia maybe it's written in here that I was supposed to have cancer and heart trouble and I was supposed to yes could have been written but you have to keep it if you have the flu can you not have it for one half hour instead of that 24 hour flu they tell us don't they and sure enough we sit there and wait don't we oh God at one o'clock the, the 24 hours will be over and we're okay aren't we well I passed that one what if it goes on for 26 hours though is it a 48 hour flu why don't we say okay I have a miserable job I'm only going to give this stupid job and this stupid husband or this stupid wife or this lousy kid or this rotten whatever I'm gonna give him two more weeks see what happens and in two weeks or a month or whatever can somebody close that door and say I'm getting a terrible thing right here see that light on the car it'll be gone in just a few minutes anyway I was seeing R's around everybody and I don't see him I thought oh well new advancement in spirituality <laughs> so now to make me happy what makes me happy I need a place to sleep I need a somebody that can drive me or to go around I'd like to travel a little bit I'd like to have good health and I'd like to have enough money isn't that basically what makes us happy isn't it now is there any more that makes us happy give me some more what makes us happy I left out one big big one pardon me good friend something else though love 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 big one biggest do you know in this day of economic stress do you know the still the number one question I'm asked where is he where is she yes I'm poverty stricken but where is he where is she I have cancer tuberculosis and colitis but where is he where is she amazing and we want the one and only don't we the one and only and we pass by every person if I get love from her if I get love from you get love from you and you and I give you love which I do is that enough to satisfy me 
It should be a big part of what satisfies me. Now, this one took me a long time to figure out because I'm supposed to have a mate, aren't I? Unless I'm a nun, which I thought about that too. But I wanted kids and I couldn't figure out how to do that. Was frowned on. But I have so many now one and onlys. I have so many loved ones. Does not a friend, like Kathleen says, ease the loneliness of a night? Doesn't knowing that somebody's thinking of you and praying for you and loving you ease the lonely night just because you don't have someone following you to the bathroom? But what if I spend my life alone? That's your choice and that's off chart. You don't ever have to be lonely. You could be alone. That's nice. You say, I have no one. I have no friends. You know what I'm going to say to you? You are not a friend. If you have friends, you are a friend. If you have loved ones, then you love. But I want somebody to love me, 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 I, I, me, me. How about how many can I love? And never think of what comes back. That is the first step to happiness. I want to love you, and if you love me, that's a bonus. And if you don't, that's your loss, maybe. But I can love you, can't I? And can I not love you for the entity that you are? Can you not love me for the entity that I am, and love her for the entity she is and am, and her, and her, with everything that makes up her? Now, people say, yes, I love unconditioned. But there's only one thing I want you to do. That's not unconditional. Can I? That's tough. Now when you ascend to that level, you're beginning to get into the heart of God, and that's what we want to do today. Is I can love you for who you are and what you're doing. I may not like all of the world around me, but I can love you close and at a distance for what you are. Are there some people I can't love? Of course. I don't love Bundy. <clears throat> I don't love, what's his name, Dalmer, whatever the, I don't love him. I don't know what I have to think about his soul. I think he's dark. But can I leave him at a distance and say, let God love him? Yes. I love that woman who said on television, they said, how have you begun to forgive the boy who killed your son? She said, I have it. I let God do that. I can't do it. I thought, good for you. Good for you. Instead of that sickening thing, I forgave him. No, you can't. And if you say it, it's a lie. You mean to tell me you can take somebody that's brutalized your son or your daughter and say, love you? No way. That's insanity. Give it to God. There's certain things you can't forgive. I gave my ex-husband to God, the whole package. I said, here, there, you handle it. Beyond me. And that's good because now I don't have to deal with it. Did I forgive him? Did I not? God's doing it. It makes us crazy, doesn't it? Wait a minute, did I forgive him? I don't know. I did yesterday, but I haven't today. <laughs> really mad today. Oh, drives you crazy. What if I don't forgive? Can I get to heaven? Maybe I'll go to hell. I don't go to hell. Maybe I'll go to purgatory. Oh, poo. This is hell, purgatory, and limbo and everything else right here on this ground. As Milton says, within every man is his heaven or his hell. True. Now, pretend you're happy even if you're not. You say that's hypocritical. No, it's not. No, it is not. During one of the tough parts of my life, <clears throat> when I worked at Presentation High School over on Kirtner and Plummer, worked there five years, this girls used to come up to me and say, Mrs. Dufresne, you're always smiling. I didn't feel like smiling, but every morning I got up and I did. I put it on. And do you know as the day wore on, I felt happier. Because as I smiled, it was reflected back on me. But you walk around with this martyred, victimized, morbid, miserable. And guess what you draw to it? 
towards you. Morbid, miserable. Now that doesn't mean if you're hurt that you want to go hide in a closet, that you don't tell your friends and you don't cry to your friends. Of course, that's part of it. But you ever notice how short your attention span gets anymore on these people that keep laboring something? I said, I've talked to you about that now three times. And you say to yourself, I'm really fed up with them. Yeah. Fed up with their suffering. You say, oh, how cruel of me. It's not cruel. You want to say, get over it. Like I said to my friend, get over your grief. You can always miss your mother. You will always love your mother. She is with you in spirit. Now go on with your life. 